Hey guys, now in today's video, we're taking a look at the brand new Creality High. This is a multicolor 3D printer from Creality, and it's really targeting the family environment. But what I have to say is that this has a lot of potential as a business printer as well. It's a very affordable printer that's going to print high quality prints, as you can see there, and it also prints functional prints. Now, to give you some background, we have a small 3D print farm that prints over 42,000 parts a year. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you the fun part of the Creality High and answer the question if it will fit in a home and is it easy to use. But I'm also going to talk about this product as a print farm add-on. Can you use this to generate functional prints that you can sell in your business? Spoiler, you can use them in both places. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the prints, we're going to look at the features, and we're going to see why you may want to consider this as your next 3D printer. Let's get right to it. Now, the first print we're going to take a look at is a fun print. And I had printed one of these Deadpool masks and uh, it was taken from my home. It wasn't taken. I gave it away because uh, some kids wanted it. And so I had to print another one. So we printed this with the Creality High. And I just wanted to show you the overall quality coming from the Creality High. Um, all of the filament here is from Creality, starting from the red is from the spool that you see there or, or previous spool. Uh, the black is also in Creality High Speed. The white is also, so literally everything here is Creality PLA, the high speed PLA. And the overall print quality is spectacular. You can see the defects are not existent in this. I actually love this. This is one of my favorite prints. I love the color and I love the overall look. And just wanted to share with you a fun print. So this is our first fun print. But we're all about business when it comes to 3D printing. And I want to share with you several prints that are functional prints that we use. Now, our print farm, as I mentioned, we are working with both manufacturers as well as hobbyists and small businesses to create several solutions uh, for those that have small business or even large businesses. Now, the majority of the printers in our print farm are bamboo. I have several others that I've brought in for review that I've integrated into our print farm because the quality um, has been able to match that of the bamboo line. So my bar is, can the printer print to the quality with the reliability that I get from bamboo? And I have to say that right out of the gate, as soon as I put this printer together, which just took me about five minutes, it was printing out of the box without any kind of tweaking or filament tuning at the quality that I would use in my farm. So this printer, not only have I been using it for this review, but I've actually been using it as part of our print farm. And I'm going to show you several prints that we've introduced. So the first one is this here. Now, this is a part for an X tool. Uh, air purifier and it's an actual splitter. I just want you to see the overall quality of this print. You can see how clean the print is. You can see, and again, this is printed in place. So when this is printed, this is printed just like this. This is what we're looking at. It is basically a splitter. So it goes into an air purifier and then it splits with two hoses. And this is a product that we sell a lot of. And this was printed on the Creality High. Now the next print that is also part of that splitter is uh, something that's called the blast gate. This also was printed on the high. This was actually printed in batches, right? So what I do is I print this piece right here, which gets a hose connected to it. And then this is the bottom portion that gets into that splitter. And then this is an open close mechanism. This is one of our, again, functional prints that we sell on our stores. And this, again, look at the overall quality, how clean this is. And again, the actual, uh, just the finish is what aligns with our brand. This is what we want. Uh, we also then, as part of that set, have also this. This was printed also on the Creality High. This is a uh, reducer that goes from that adapter to a smaller hose, and we have several hoses that we work with. This over here is for a upcoming review, and we printed this on the high as well. Uh, this is used for markers, for different 3D print markers. We're actually reviewing the Creality Raptor Pro, which is a 3D scanner, and we have printed many of these so that we can scan more easily uh, se several items. Little dots go here. You're going to see an example of some other ones that we already have uh, functionally uh, working now. And you can see the overall quality there. Th these are the actual parts that are going to be used in for the 3D scanner. And you can see this right here. So basically, let's make sure that we can get that in focus for you. Uh, there we go. So you can see this right here. These are basically print in place. They have a magnet on the bottom, and then all these dots are basically put in place so that we can um, get better scans from the scanner. And these are all magnetic. So this is something that we use as well. Now, 
as you guys know, Nilda does a lot of laser engraving. So I create a lot of products for her business and she sells these as well that are used basically to uh, present items or to create items. So what you see here, and I'll bring this one in, this is a pen holder. And this was uh, printed with Polymaker PLA. And this is Polymaker's, it's a two-tone PLA, right? So it's the same roll, but depending on where the filament is in the roll, you're gonna get different tones. So this is a pen holder for the pens that she may be creating uh, for her clients um, and using them for either photography or if she is in a pop-up event and she's looking to sell. Now this right here is a jewelry chain stand or bracelet stand that she uses also when she is at events. Uh, this is something that I created. I designed this um, with some CAD software and you're gonna see one that actually has some items on it in a couple seconds. This is using a copper uh, PLA, silk PLA. And I would say the only thing I'm, I'm really would like to tweak on this is to, to get more, more evenness here, right? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to work that out in the tuning, but right now, literally all I'm doing is I'm choosing Creality's generic silk PLA for this. And I can see that there's some opportunities. As you can see right here, this is some of the areas I'd like to get tuned out. But again, even though I'm calling this a review, that printer is not final. It's not released yet to the public. So I expect that there's gonna be the firmware is going to be improved and there could be more changes coming to it via firmware or software. So this is again uh, something that we printed, the base. You can see this great first layer. I really love the, the sheet that it has. It has a different type of a sheet. It doesn't have a PEI sheet. And so this is really coming out with some really nice prints. Now this right here is another jewelry stand. Uh, so this is going to be for uh, chains as well. This is actually a model that we found online. Uh, so we're going to be using this for an upcoming event that she has at a local bar. Uh, where they have a pop-up event. So she'll have the chains that she sells here uh, for engraving. And you can see the overall quality there. Really, really nice. If you look at that first layer, fantastic first layer. And this just looks so good. Uh, we wanted something that would be tall that would attract, uh, again, people to come and check out the product. Now, this is another jewelry stand that we printed on the, on the printer. This one right here, though, is using the same filament that's two-tone that you saw earlier. But again, as it was going through the roll, it basically had this color. And then when it came to the middle, it had this color. I don't know if I can reproduce something like this next time because the colors are going to be different every single time. But this is, again, uh, the actual look that we got. And with this, since this is a uh, more of a matte PLA, again, this is all Polymaker PLA. This one, I had no sheen issues, no real texture issues. This one came out spot on. This is something that we would sell as well. So this is our design. I put it on our store and sell it for those that want a display for jewelry like this. And you can see the angel numbers that we have here in display. Now these are some of the jigs that we have for a variety of lasers. Uh, these work on fiber lasers, dial lasers, CO2 lasers, large gantry lasers, um, small lasers. So if you think about the, uh, most of the brands that are on the market, we create these fixtures for them. And we've been receiving a lot of requests to create a fixture holder, a jig caddy per, per se. Uh, so this jig caddy that you see right here, this holder that holds this, was basically uh, printed on the high as well. And by the way, all these jigs have been printed as well on the Creality High with the type of quality that we would expect. And it fits our print farm quality guide. So this is something that would be client facing. This is something that we've sent out. And again, printed on the Creality High. Now this printer comes unassembled, and, but the assembly is really quick. Uh, pretty much all you have to do is put the actual gantry together and that's it. It's literally about five minutes attached to the actual screen. And depending on the configuration that you get, if you do get one with the CFS, then you have to uh, connect the CFS. The solution is available on its own. It does look like a similar printer that's available on the market. You can name it immediately when you see it. It does look like an A1, let's just call it what it is. And I'll tell you, it prints amazingly well. Uh, the build volume, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, 260 by 260 by 300, right? Um, not, not only do you have a great build volume, which I really love, this is using a different type of build plate. And I haven't experienced this build plate before. And it's kind of like an epoxy plate is what they call. It's not a PEI sheet. Um, and what I love about it is that so far, everything that I have printed on it prints. Everything that I print on it sticks. I haven't really had any, any problem with this build plate. And it works, again, incredibly well. Now, this printer, as I mentioned, 
can have the optional CFS and the CFS I've printed a variety of different type of materials. It is an open, uh, it's an open style, uh, I would say printer as you can see, but it's going to support things like PLA. Uh, it's going to do TPU, PETG, ABS, PLA, CF, but I would watch the, the ambient temperature of where you're doing this because it's not enclosed, right? So that's, it's good that it has that many different material types that you can print with. Now the nozzle itself, you're going to get up to 300 C and you can see the nozzle right over there, 300 C, the bed temperature of hundred C. And basically it will, it has, you know, it's leveling mode, anti-tilt mode. It also has a, um, again, the CFS that you see right here supporting not just four, but you can daisy chain these together just like you can with the K2 plus. And by, matter of fact, this is the same CFS that you'd see in a K2 plus. So if you have a K2 plus and you have two CFSs and you want to take it off and put it on this one, you could, or if you want to get this one with the K2, with the CFS, that's something that you could do as well. It does use their Creality print software, which right now I'm on uh, 6.2, I think it is. And you're going to be able to have, if you combine all these CFSs, you can have up to 16. So 16 colors because of, you know, the number of CFSs that you can connect. Now on the side here, you're also going to notice that it has a reader here for your filament. So if you have a Creality filament, as soon as you can connect it, it will read it and then you can connect it to the external spool. Uh, I'm using obviously the CFS with this solution and I'll show you what the print job looks like in a couple seconds or how that print process works. It has filament cutter, it has the eject system right here for your poop and you can see the poop that's been coming out there. You do have a touch screen and the touch screen is pretty vivid. Uh, it is, and we'll go over some of the settings right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. You have, this is where your storage is of all the prints that you've had. You also, well, you can do two types. You have local and then USB, and you also have your print history. I'm going to show you some other prints that we printed for, for Valentine's. We have, you know, your controls. You have your, get out, fat fingering this. Let me go over here. There you go. Uh, your settings here, uh, screen brightness. Uh, timeout, self-check, all that stuff for more updates can take place here. If you go into the about, this is the wiki. So screen is very responsive, even though it was my fat fingers that weren't really tapping the buttons well. And this is tiltable and it has a clicking sound that allows you to have it in various uh, positions. The, again, the thing that amazes me so much, and I spoke to Creality about this when I first started testing the printer, was uh, I told them, you know what, this printer, is so good that I could see this working in my farm. And they were shocked that I said that. But you saw the overall print quality. The print quality on this printer is exactly where it needs to be for someone like me that's using uh, or has a print farm. So let me show you some other prints uh, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so guys, so we have the printer started and you can see we've loaded the job. The temperature is right now at 144. It's probably going to go to 120, but it's cleaning the nozzle. It's getting everything set up. And I wanted to show you some of the prints that we've gotten, uh, some more prints, right? So remember I was just talking about that uh, Polymaker PLA, which is that multicolor one. So here is again, same roll of filament, but now a different part of the roll. You can see how this is a little bit more like a darker coffee mode and this is a little bit lighter and uh, good quality again, nice back finish or first finish. It's pretty solid. Now the printer I would say is relatively quiet as it's going through this setup process. The fan does kick in um, and can get a little bit loud, but not significantly loud as I've seen with other printers. I would use this in a bedroom, in a studio, in an open place if you want your kids to be able to see it printing. It's, it's a good printer. And, and I don't even have to wait for the final version to tell you that I would buy this printer. It's a solid, solid printer. I haven't had any jams, nothing wrong with the CFS, nothing wrong with uh, the printer, no f spook, uh, I would say filament issues. I haven't seen anything. Uh, and I still have in the background you've seen in the opening of the video, I still have my K2 Plus. And K2 Plus, I've been running nonstop print jobs on it. I have had, you know, the occasional things where it says it's a filament jam and there isn't one and, or ch uh, trouble with the CFS. But again, with this kit, this was a combo. This came in and it's just been working solid, right? So we've been running a lot. Here are some uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, gifts that we are making. So this goes on a wine bottle and then just sits like this tag right here and it says to my love I have love potion new formula it goes in the wine bottle or tequila bottle whatever you want. 
and then here's one also in red to my love all printed on this printer and you can see how thin that filament was and you can see how nice crisp the colors are no real bleed and you know all using standard settings now while that's printing let's talk a little bit about the cfs for those of you who are new to um, the creality cfs uh, ecosystem a couple things let me move this thing out of the way so we don't break it the cfs is going to be able to hold up to four colors uh, filament and we've been very very fortunate uh, we haven't had any issues so this is creality hyper pla white hyper pla red this is polymaker i'm using a, uh, a bamboo spool on this and then this is polymaker black i ran out of the black that i was using with this because of all the prints that we're doing so i didn't i don't have any more so our our filament right now for all these things is all polymaker um, that's what we're using. So the, uh, the, again, the CFS that you're seeing here is relatively quiet. I don't really see many issues or loudness concerns um, when it's uh, feeding. And what you're going to be doing is on the side, and I'll, we'll go and look at the printer in the back while this thing is getting ready to print so you can see how the connections work. Back of the printer is pretty straightforward. Everything is nicely tucked away. There aren't anything in exposed, no tracks to capture stuff. You can see here is your heat bed cable. Everything looks good here, your power, your power switch. And then for those of you who are looking for the hub, here's where I have my hub. I just double taped it, double sided tape. Here is the cable that goes to the CFS right here. This is the other CFS cable that goes right there on the side. And then you can see the actual print nozzle going up. Uh, on the back, it has information about you know, any kind of maintenance you're gonna do, how you need to disconnect things if you need to get in there. So you can see that right here. I haven't had any need to go in there to remove the X access motor wire at all, but you know, that's there. And you can see again, the process is typically gonna go up. Uh, there's a, again, a little switch on the top, goes to the top, then it goes down, and then we're gonna see it start in a couple seconds. Now the printer does have an onboard camera. It does have also a light uh, that you can turn on on the side. So everything is found right there. You can see, uh, I had to power it down to get it here. So let me go ahead and turn that on. Right now it's going through the process of loading the filament. You'll see it eject here in a second. Now from a sound perspective, uh, here is, I wanna be away from the printer. Well, let's, uh, let me get closer to it so you can hear what it's like very up close. That is very quiet. Let's let it run. Once it starts in full power, and then we'll do another another uh, sound meter test. All right, guys, so now the printer is kicked into high speed, and we're going to see what the actual sound is like. That's not bad, and a lot of this noise is more the wobble from my table than it is the actual printer, but that was not bad at all. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.